coming up, celebrating your freedom to fly by honoring those who fought for it. Plus, kids get hands-on with painting an airplane. And training to save your life in a way you may never have thought of. AOPA Live This Week begins in just a moment. The people of AOPA's Legal Services Plan work to help protect your certificates, and they love to fly as much as you do. The AOPA Legal Services Plan is offered as part of our pilot protection services. It's a members-only benefit provided to thousands of pilots like you. This is AOPA Live This Week with Tom Haynes and Melissa Rudinger. Happy Independence Day, everyone. We hope you're enjoying the holiday. And we hope while you're celebrating our nation's uh, uh, founding, we, that, you, that you take some time to exercise your freedom to fly as well. As you know, there's no other place in the world like it. There really isn't. I mean, just think about it. You get your certificate in this country, you can go out in your airplane, fly just about anywhere you want, not quite everywhere, but a lot of places. You don't need anybody's permission. You don't have to tell the government where you're gonna go. You don't have to pay a lot of fees in most cases and uh, you can just go out and enjoy your freedom to fly. Exactly, and now sure, us old timers think it's gotten more regulated and mm -hmm. more complex airspace and all of that, but it's not hyperbole to say, you've flown in a lot of countries, I've flown in a few right. countries, that it's way, way more complicated and complex everywhere else in the world. It really is. I've flown general aviation airplanes on five continents and I could lost track of the number of countries, but there's a lot of them and I can tell you that there is no place on the planet to fly like this. In Europe and places like that, tower closes at uh, six o'clock, airports shut down and you can't fly anymore. Exactly. And as you celebrate your freedom to fly, we have some resources to help you pick where you wanna go. Summer's here, it's time for vacation, and we have all kinds of ideas for you to take your airplane and go flying for the summer. Whether it's to islands, beaches, national parks, any corner of the United States, we have stories and articles, videos for you. They'll tell you not only what airport to fly into, but also what you can do when you're there, where you can go eat, where you can stay, and the fun activities that are around for you, your friends, and your family. If you'd like to get Travel Pilot or a weekly email newsletter, just log on to AOPA.org, hit the drop down by your name, and go to Profile Information, and then Opt-in Choices. By the way, Alyssa is working on something else besides Travel Pilot that could figure into your flying. You could be sporting a new ride this summer. The AOPA Sweepstakes Super Cub could be yours very soon. Yes, the AOPA Super Cub Sweepstakes airplane is finished. It's got its fresh annual. And the winner? Well, stay tuned on that. And if you're headed to EAA AirVenture in Oshkosh, Wisconsin, there's a new service to help those flying in. You can sign up for text messages to get updated information about the procedures. Just text OSH ARRIVAL, all one word, to 64600 and you'll get the latest updates sent straight to your phone. And remember to read and understand the NOTAM which is in effect from the 19th through the 29th. You can find it on the EAA website. In case you had noticed, it's mighty hot in most parts of the country right now, which means you should be thinking about density altitude. Some pilots think that this is an issue only up in the mountains, but hey, even at sea level, a really hot and humid day can sap your aircraft's performance. So spend some time with your aircraft performance charts, and you might want to take another look at the AOPA Air Safety Institute video reality check. You can find it on ASI's YouTube channel. And remember this rule of thumb, if you're halfway down the runway and you still don't have 75% of your liftoff speed, it's time to abort. And now, time to think about something really hot. We fly with them on board and they're all around us. As we begin to celebrate our freedom with fireworks, we wonder how many of us really know how to use a fire extinguisher. AOPA Live's Paul Harrop shows us a flight school that wanted to remove any doubt. It's normally not a good thing to see fire trucks at the airport, but today it's an ounce of prevention. Don't point it down and plunge it. It's just like plunging a water stream in. It will pop up. Getting hands-on with fire extinguishers at Bravo Flight Training. It was an obvious opportunity for school owner Brenda Tibbs. Well, one day I heard somebody talking about taking the pin out of the fire extinguisher, and I thought, oh, I've never taken the pin out of a fire extinguisher before. You hope to never have to, but getting hands-on experience is a common theme with dealing with aviation emergencies, so Brenda pulled together this training opportunity. This just gives us an easy environment with somebody instructing us how to do it, and we have a whole safety team right behind us. 
Like many things in aviation, it only takes a little bit of training to become proficient, and it could save your life. And the training's pretty cool. The takeaways? Know what kind of fire you have and use the right type of extinguisher. Start at the base of the flames and then use the stream to knock out the fire. Sweep back and forth. Now, you don't have unlimited spray, so be as judicious as you can. Again, try to know the type of fire you have and use the right unit. Getting it wrong can cost you. Say the magnesium renovators on a Bonanza were ablaze. If you hit it with water, it's going to make it worse. It's all about training in a non-stress environment to gain knowledge on which to fall back <laughs> and to build relationships among these aviators. I just think it's very important to bring everybody together like this group right now. All of these people know each other and that's because we do these activities and they all get to do fun things together. And I think that it gives them somebody to fly with later once they have their license. In Frederick, Paul Harrop, AOPA Live. Many fire departments are happy to help with your training. Reach out to local officials to see if they can bring this hands-on experience to your airport. Now here's a hands-on experience to excite and educate the kids. At our fly-in in Livermore, California a couple of weeks ago, we came across an airplane with an unusual paint scheme with a purpose. AOP Alive's Josh Cochran has the story. A splash of red here, a line of green there. These kids at the AOPA fly-in to Livermore are doing something most have never done before paint an airplane. So who lets a group of kids do this? Retired naval aviator Ron Cuff. Ron intentionally left his Cessna 182 plain white to serve as a canvas for kids. It's part of his desire to spread an important message about the tools needed for a successful life using aviation as a metaphor. And a great life is like a great flight. And that means three things. Number one, you have to be trained for it. In other words, get a good education become trained in whatever it is you want to do in life. Number two, you have to pick a destination for your, for your life, just like when we go flying, we all pick a destination. And then the most important thing is to keep your brain healthy. And that means not intoxicating it with alcohol, tobacco, or any other drugs. Kids are drawn to the airplane by the opportunity to paint. And before they start, they take a pledge to stay away from alcohol and drugs until they are 21. The name of the nonprofit, Safe Launch, came from Ron's experience in the Navy. Well, the name Safe Launch is derived from my experience of being launched 120 times from seven different aircraft carriers in the Western Pacific. And uh, it occurred to me that that's really what we need to do with our young people. We need to launch them safely into adulthood without the disease of addiction. Ron flies the airplane all over the country with artist Janet Rouse. Addiction and substance abuse are at the core of a lot of the things that are going on in the country today that are very difficult social problems. People need to understand that it's a 100% preventable disease and that 90% of that starts before age 18. Janet sees art as the perfect way to start the conversation with these kids. We say that art saves lives and that art is a way of communicating when you can't use your words and it gives you something really fun and positive to think about. And while painting the airplane is fun, the airplane also carries reminders of the cost of addiction. Underneath the wings of the plane we have 230 names of young people that died from substance abuse, substance use disorder. Um, a lot of them died from an overdose and we carry those with us because when the kids are painting the plane, we want the families to understand that this can happen to anybody, and it does happen to anybody, and it's, it's so important for people to understand why we're doing it. And the desire to prevent the destruction of lives caused by addiction is what motivates Ron and Janet to fly thousands of miles to air shows around the country to spread this message. Josh Cochran, AOPA Live. In case you're wondering, the paint is washable. A local airplane detailer donates their time to clean the airplane after each event. And Safe Launch is looking for other pilots and aircraft owners to help spread their message. To find out more, visit their websites. I ran across that airplane at the fly-in. I had not seen right. their, their mission is really cool. And I think, it, wouldn't that be fun as a kid? I yeah. think it'd be a very memorable way to get the right. message across. Kind of like writing on your walls at home. That's right. Only you're allowed to do it. And getting away with it, yeah. <laughs> Well, coming up, Homeland Security on the threat of drones.
and living history of Tuskegee Airmen's continued service. We'll be right back. There are many important things to consider before purchasing an aircraft. Let the experts at Aerospace Reports help guide you through the process. We combine expert knowledge with our long-standing commitment to personalized customer service to perfect your transaction. Learn more at aerospacereports.com. Heads up for Cessna 177 and 210 owners. The FAA wants information from you in the name of safety. A modified 210M model had a wing separation in Australia. The survey airplane had tip tanks and a tail boom and had been operated in extreme conditions. The fatal accident was caused by fatigue cracking inboard of the wing attachment lugs. Textron has issued mandatory service letters for the 210 and 177 models because of the crash. The FAA wants to hear from owners of these models, so if you've had any known cracking of the carry-through spar on these models, you can get in touch with the FAA. Just search for airworthiness concern sheet. A $47 landing fee? Imagine a flight school paying that for every landing with their students. Well, that's what a flight school in Oakland, California was facing before AOPA stepped in to help. The Port of Oakland proposed the fee at the Oakland International Airport. It likely would have driven the local flight school called the Oakland Flyers out of business. AOPA has sent a letter to the Port Authority and it looks like they're going to exempt the flight school from the fee allowing the Oakland Flyers to continue their long legacy of flight training. Threat avoided. And Homeland Security says drones are a threat. They sent out a warning saying that drones in general pose multiple threats, including their potential use for terrorism, mass casualty incidents, interference with air traffic, as well as corporate espionage and invasion of privacy. And DHS singled out Chinese-made drones in particular, saying they could be sending information to the Chinese government. Most consumer drones are made in China and most of them by DJI. But DJI says its customers have full control over how their data is stored and transmitted. But just to be extra secure, the company's announced new high security drones for use by government agencies. And some of you have taken us to task for referring to unmanned aerial vehicles or UAVs as drones. Actually, the FAA prefers UAS or unmanned aerial systems, but heck, even UAS giant DJI calls them drones, as do most people on the street. Okay, now here is something that we can, without question or contradiction, call a drone. This is the RoboB X-Wing, and a drone is a male bee after all, get it? The tiny wings and even small, smaller solar cells let the mechanical insect take autonomous flight. Piezoelectric actuators work like tiny muscles flapping the carbon fiber and polyester wings. Researchers at Harvard say the drone is almost as energy efficient as a real bee. Right now it can only fly in very bright light, but once they perfect the circuits, these tiny robots could be deployed to do things like take air quality measurements or search for victims in collapsed buildings perhaps. They might even be deployed in swarms, and so far, no stingers. Turning again to the celebration of our nation's founding, we're reminded that freedom isn't free. Our independence endures because of the dedication and sacrifices of patriots from all walks of life. We had the privilege to meet one of those patriots earlier this year. He'll be celebrating his 100th birthday in December. Colonel Charles McGee is one of the famed Tuskegee Airmen a group of African-American pilots and mechanics who, during World War II, proved that aviation courage and excellence is colorblind. On this Independence Day, we'd like to share a bit of our interview with Colonel McGee. Part of the Army's program at that time was that they couldn't use a black pilot because they didn't have any black mechanics. So of the now-called Tuskegee Airmen, the first were the mechanics mm. that were put into training at Chinute Field, ran to Illinois. That's 14 miles away from the university. Yep. And of course we learned there's something going on up there. The Army expected them to fail, and they didn't. The Army Air Corps at that time. Army Air Corps right. thought they, you know, we, it just didn't go to work, but we'll, we'll experiment. In fact, that first authorization for the 99th fighter squadron was an experiment by the Army because they expected it to fail. Mm -hmm. But the first were the mechanics. They didn't fail. And uh, the Army said, oh my gosh, then we need an airfield for the pilot training. They found $4 million to build Tuskegee Army Airfield. Airfields all around the country. Right. But they built that airfield. Mechanics, before the field was finished, were housed over at Maxwell Field. 
Maxwell needed mechanics, but wouldn't use them because they're black. So they just boarded there until the airfield was finished, then then moved over. But we flew missions, uh, and I would say north, west to southern France, north into Germany, Czechoslovakia, Romania, the, and uh, the oil fields all the way going east to the, the oil fields in Romania. So we had quite a few. The longest mission that the group ever flew was I had come home, but near the end of the war, they had a flight uh, in the, to Berlin. And uh, fortunately, uh, the group was one of two groups shooting down the, the German jets that were the ME262 that were put, put in. Uh, uh, I guess they thought they could outrun the 51, but didn't didn't happen in every case. <laughs> <laughs> but I think also when we look back, probably the majority of experienced German pilots were no longer I mean, in, in there, no longer available. So that may have been part of that, part of that too. But the the group, because of that mission, was recognized. Uh, and as I say, we became the Red Tails, and that's a story a lot of people don't aren't aware of. Uh, uh, the Red Tail, well, of the four groups, somebody in 15th Air Force, one of the gunners on the bombers, to know that these airplanes we're bringing up there are not German, they're right. there to help you. Right. One had yellow tail, one had candy stripe, red and white stripes, one had orange and black checkerboard, 332nd had the red tail. Of course, uh, somebody in the story said they may have painted the rudder at first and somebody may have told them to paint the whole tail. I, I think that's just the worst story. <laughs> I think painting the whole tail was the original uh, uh, part of it. But that's why uh, the red tails uh, became popular. But four Ps I give to young folks. Perceive, prepare, perform, persevere. Perceive, dream your dreams. Mm -hmm. But I always add, hopefully among as you discover your talents, you pinpoint something you like doing. But prepare, get a good education, learn to read, write, and speak well, and develop those talents. Perform, let excellence be your goal in everything you to do, always doing your best. Nobody can ask more from you if you aren't doing it. They can if you aren't doing your best. And persevere, you know, we could have gone off, bowed our heads, said they call me names, don't like me, and not served our country. Don't let circumstance like that be your excuse for not achieving. You can hear the full interview on our Hangar Talk podcast. It was amazing being there in the room with him. I gotta say, he is something else. Great stories, incredible memory, and he's just been so many places, done so many fascinating things, and, and now, you know, at the end there, he's talking about uh, his work with youth. He goes out to schools and talks to schools and really helps motivate kids and, and, and helps them, you know, sort of plan their future. It's neat to see. It's it's very inspiring. I love the especially the perseverance. It's just right. hard to imagine that that's how our world was less than a hundred years ago. I know. It really, really is. Yeah. Yeah. But it is. we've come a long way, I suppose. Yeah, but a long ways to go. Uh, absolutely. <laughs> and finally, as we leave you this Independence Day, we'll take you back to Europe and the resting places of so many who answered the call when our freedoms were threatened. Have a safe and happy holiday. We'll see you again next Thursday.